टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन किडनी गोल ब्लड हाइपर टेंशन वी आर बेसिकली डिस्कसिंग टाइप्स ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन इन विच द एंजोटेंसिन इज इन्वॉल्व वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल वन टाइप ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन दैट वॉज ड्यू टू एंजोटेंसिन एंड दैट वॉज द रेनिन सिक्रिटिंग ट्यूमर और इन्फ्यूजन ऑफ एंजोटेंसिन वी आर डिस्कसिंग द रोल ऑफ किडनी इन लॉन्ग टर्म रेगुलेशन ऑफ आर्टीरियल प्रेशर एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डिफरेंट मेकेनिजम्स थ्रू विच द किडनी रेगुलेट द आर्टीरियल प्रेशर नाउ इफ दोज मेकेनिजम्स फेल टू रेगुलेट द आर्टीरियल प्रेशर देन हाइपर टेंशन अकर्स देन हाइपर टेंशन अकर्स इन वन ऑफ द रीजन फॉर द फेलियर ऑफ द किडनी टू रेगुलेट arterial pressure is due to is some abnormality with the angiotensin so we are discussing those types of hypertension in which angiotensin is involved and of course due to the irregularities at the level of kidney now what is one kidney gold blood hypertension one kidney gold blood hypertension occurs when one kidney is removed one kidney is removed from the body and a clamp is applied in the renal artery of the second kidney clamp is applied here basically what the clamp is doing it is basically constricting it is basically constricting the diameter of the arteriole so before applying the clamp the diameter of this renal artery is normal and after applying this clamp the diameter is decreased or we are basically constricting the renal artery after removing one kidney and that's why it is known as one kidney goldblatt hypertension the experiments done by goldblatt that's why it is known as uh, goldblatt hypertension now what occurs after constricting the renal artery or after applying a a clamp um, in the or the renal artery initially initially the blood pressure in this renal artery initially the blood pressure in or the arterial pressure in this renal artery will fall down now we see that the normal the normal arterial pressure the normal arterial pressure in this renal artery it falls down below the normal level at this point at this point this pressure was normal but after applying the constriction suddenly this the pressure in this part this the pressure beyond this constriction fell down suddenly all of a sudden as soon as this constriction is applied and within hours the the pressure the arterial pressure in the systemic arteries the systemic arteries arterial pressure suddenly starts increasing then after some time this arterial pressure uh decrease a little bit and then starts increase increasing gradually so initially there is a decrease in the arterial pressure in the renal artery in the artery beyond the the point of application of clamp the and there is increase decrease here and increase in the systemic arterial pressure so arterial pressure in the renal artery has suddenly decreased and the systemic pressure the the systemic arterial pressure has started suddenly increasing and then after a small dip this arterial pressure increases gradually a little bit more and then it stabilizes why this there is a sudden increase then there is a dip and then there is a gradual increase we see that as soon as the constriction is applied at that very point at that very point 
there is secretion of a lot of renin because we have discussed in the previous lectures that as the arterial pressure falls and the kidney senses a fall in the arterial pressure there is a lot of secretion of renin then what renin is doing the renin basically converts the angiotensinogen into angiotensin 2 angio tensinogen into angiotensin with the help of renin this angiotensin is basically doing two things it is increasing arterial pressure with the help of vasoconstriction friction and retention of salt and water because of the constriction the arterial pressure has fallen down which is perceived by the kidney as a decrease in arterial pressure and it secretes a lot of renin we see that there is a surge this is the normal secretion of the renin in the body this is the normal point and as soon the soon as soon as the constriction is applied as the clamp the artery uh, the renal artery is clamped there is a surge in the secretion of renin and if this is one if this is one then we can see that the ren the, 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 the in the secretion of renin has increased around seven times normal and this increase in renin converts a lot of angiotensinogen into angiotensin and this angiotensin acutely causes vasoconstriction it causes vasoconstriction all the blood vessels in the body are constricted due to the strong vasoconstriction of the angiotensin and that vasoconstriction acutely increases the arterial pressure this is basically the systemic arterial pressure increases and as the systemic arterial pressure increases it also ultimately increases the arterial pressure at this very point it increases the arterial pressure at this very point and now the high pressure at this point allows the blood to go past this constriction it can now the 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 pressure of the blood has increased so it can maneuver or it can pass this constriction a bit easier so the pressure at this point also starts increasing and we see that the arterial pressure in this renal artery this dotted line is basically showing the arterial pressure in the renal artery and this red line is basically showing the arterial the systemic arterial pressure this is the distal renal arterial pressure the dotted line and this is the systemic arterial pressure so as initially after constriction this is the, the the pressure in the renal artery the distal renal artery has fallen down while the systemic arterial pressure has increased due to a lot of renin secretion but as the systemic arterial pressure increases it also allows the pressure in the blood in high pressure to pass this constriction point which ultimately increases the arterial pressure in this portion again so we see that there is a, that there is an increase slow slowly slow and gradual increase in the arterial pressure in this renal artery as well but we see that the the amount of renin the amount of renin that was initially at day zero at the time of application of the constriction it had surged to this point it has now gradually returned at day four uh, at day seven or eight six seven or eight day it has almost returned to the normal point this is the normal point and this renin has from this point returned to this normal level because because of increase in the systemic artery arterial uh, pressure the blood can now pass the constriction and the kidney perceives it as a normal pressure and the as the pressure in the renal artery increases from this point to this normal level from this point to this normal level finally here the pressure 
here becomes normal so the secretion of the renin has returned to normal so basically the initial the initial surge of the arterial pressure the initial surge that is the early rise in this arterial pressure was due to the secretion of renin now the renin has gone down the renin has gone down but the art the systemic arterial pressure remains elevated it remains elevated now this is known as late rise this is known as late rise and this late rise is because of retention of salt and water we know that once the angiotensin is formed because the renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin angiotensin initially causes the vasoconstriction the vasoconstriction raises the systemic pressure or acutely it also tries to improve the renal artery pressure uh, but after a few days it also starts uh, retention of the salt and water with the help of aldosterone now this is something which we have discussed in detail in as a function of the renin angiotensin and angiotensinogen so the acute this initial rise this initial rise was basically due to the rise in the level of renin but the renin the renin has started decreasing and it will come to its normal level because the arterial pressure uh, the the arterial pressure in the renal artery has improved but there is a late rise of the systemic arterial pressure and that late rise is due to the retention of salt and water which is also caused with the help of angiotensin and this rise this rise in the arterial pressure this hypertension that has been caused by this constriction of one renal artery after removal of one kidney is known as the one kidney goldblatt hypertension one kidney goldblatt hypertension so one kidney goldblatt hypertension is simply removal of one kidney and then application of a constrictor or a clamp on the renal artery of the remaining kidney which basically leads to increase in the systemic arterial pressure and it is known as one kidney goldblatt hypertension and this one kidney goldblatt hypertension has two parts one is the early rise and the second part is the late rise early rise is because of this rapid secretion of the renin as soon as this part is constricted pressure in the kidney decreases so there is a lot of secretion of renin which converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin and angiotensin causes vasoconstriction which rapidly raises the our systemic arterial pressure but as soon as the uh, the pressure in the renal artery improves the the renin secretion falls down so the renin secretion falls down but the effect of the angiotensin that is the retention of salt and water remains and this retention of salt and water by the aldosterone and with the help of angiotensin leads to another rise in the systemic arterial pressure and that is known as the late rise and that late rise is due to retention of salt and water and no direct action of the renin so these are two components of the one kidney goldblatt hypertension and we see that as the constriction at this point is released we can see that the systemic arterial pressure this goldblatt hypertension will go away and the systemic arterial pressure will fall down again so that's all about the one kidney goldblatt hypertension thanks a lot for watching the video